Okay, we're back. It's 11.10. 11, 11, 11 didn't do so hot. So, but thank you very much for waiting your patience and anybody staying up late. I uh, hope you're enjoying it. Um, we have had one member of uh, Mr. Crockett needed to go home. Uh, so you're going to be appointed to be able to be a voting member. We can last until we lose a quorum. And any member can leave if they choose to leave. There's no rule that says you have to stay here. So right now we've got a quorum. So we can continue uh, till that point. At that point, um, then we'll have no choice but the table. Okay? Yep. Please give me a heads up. Uh, okay. So why don't we start off with, uh, again, if you'd like to, we have not gone through the criteria. Would you rather <coughs> go through that next or is it, or what would you like to do next? Um, I think what I'd like to do is if we could just take a brief, like a question and answer on this one and three these two combined criteria that kind of interplay? Because what I, essentially, I think two and four we won't need to address at all. What's written is sufficient, and we know where the issues are. Um, and the primary issue that I have is just that because these two provisions play off each other somewhat, that I'm worried that if we try and just treat them separately, we, the board won't be able to ask the questions that they have, and I won't be able to answer them okay, completely. But remember, so, but remember, as it stands, <coughs> you know, we have to vote on them separately, even though yes. we're discussing them together. Yes. So even though we may agree substantively that, yeah, we agree together they work, when they stand alone, they may not. Yes. As long as we're on the same page with that, but that's fine. So um, I'll open up to the board for questions, uh, if, if you'd like to... Did we want to go through the criteria? Want to go Not through this is the, their, the, the letter. Well, what, what do the letter may answer some of the <coughs> questions. All right, yeah. I'm going with that. Why don't I uh, grab some of the key points? Stop me as I go through each paragraph, okay? Uh, the first, I'm going to go right down through the paragraphs and change the pages, okay? So I'm not going to read it. I see nothing on the first page that is, uh, causes any tension. Any of the board member or. Um, Mr. Callan, see anything that you want to make sure is brought up? No, I think that was the main point we addressed earlier about the two lots. <coughs> Number two, um, I'll read this paragraph in because I know at least two of us have some questions on this one. Yeah. Given the small size of the lot, the board suggests to NS, uh, NCS that the board would be more comfortable supporting a variance for a single structure to be built on a lot rather than approving a lot division to separate the existing cottages. The lot was therefore met marketed and sold to Dayton's for that very purpose, and the Dayton's immediately began working with NCS and Walt Wilson of the design company on the design. And then I start down at the other end. Uh, and we'll work Certainly. Uh, two components of that paragraph I had some notes on. Um, given the small so size of the lot, the board suggested that we would be more comfortable supporting a variance. What we basically said at that point was we we felt very strongly at that time we couldn't split the property into two. So the essentially the option that we thought was available to you was going to one single or two, <coughs> either two structures or one structure on that lot. So what I had suggested, and I went back and looked through the notes of that video, and I had suggested jamming those two together those two buildings together, literally physically joining them. I didn't know the condition of the buildings because that wasn't presented to us. Matter of fact, when it was presented to us, they were said they were in great shape. They were taken, well taken care of. Clearly that is not the case based on what we heard here tonight. I think that's a different set of evidence, but at that time we felt it, was, it might be possible to slide them together, and that wasn't part of Actually, a... Actually, the quote that, again, I have on tape says very specifically that they're in great shape. Uh, okay. from the owners of the property. Okay. Um, so we were led to believe that, and uh, one may can deduce whatever they want to from the pictures, but that would be a, an accurate statement, and you did say that you suggested taking the one unit and bringing it toward connecting it with and the... Connecting it to the front building Correct. is essentially what I was saying. And then it says, therefore, mar and it said the lot was then marketed and sold to the Daytons for that very purpose. I think that's a mistake because at this point we can't uh, we can't tell you to do one thing or another thing we can suggest 
and it sounds like, I don't want to say you were sold a bill of goods, it sounds like they didn't tell you the whole story. They didn't give you the big picture. And then you paid full market value on that property, not knowing whether you could use it or not. It seems a bit unfair. We can't control that. I'm just giving you my opinion. Um, but that's where I have a little bit of a disconnect because now it almost kicks in item number four or D, where it's not an action by a, pr a prior owner or the current owner. It's almost an act of the prior owner by not saying, hey, by the way, they talked about jamming two buildings together because when I said jamming two buildings together, to me that meant not only in plan you have about 1,700 square feet, but in elevation and size of the building, I envisioned like one end being in one and a half stories, the other end being one. You come in with your family needs, which I fully understand, and you need so many bedrooms because you've got so many people in the home. You want people that want to come and visit. You've got mechanical rooms that you need. You need storage. You need closets. You need bathrooms. I get it. But what I envisioned at that time was something in the range of, I'm going to throw a number out, 2,100, 2,200 square feet because story and a half and then maybe story and a half. And then when I see the design and it's 3,400 square feet, that is a lot of building. So when I talk about mass, I have been visioning since last January this. And now when I look at the drawings, it's this. And it's 65 feet long. And I was the wise guy that said it looks like a drive-in theater. Not a very good way of putting it out there. I apologize for that. But that was just my impression. I think I also said it was like a sale. So, again, it's just about mass to me. It, I can't imagine being in the neighbor's home next to it, <clears throat> and the, the, lot, the lot line is only seven feet, I think, on one side. And then there's a driveway. Now we're maybe at 13, 14, 15 feet. And we're at that six next... Feet wide. Is that right? I believe it's six feet wide. Okay, so I'm 15 feet away, and I, I don't want to... I scaled it off at my house. I hate to say it. I, I stepped it off. I put myself 15 feet from the edge of my building, and I looked up. And I was like, I, ca I can't imagine that. I can't imagine having 30 feet to the peak, and I'm standing 15 feet away. I'm looking up at a 45-degree angle. It's a phenomenally big building that close to that. It's the property that's inboard, not water side, not the ocean side. It's the one inland. And I just, I, I was, it just blew me away. So that's why I was so callously candid when I said it was huge. And it was probably not the best words because it, I'm sorry, it, I was not very smooth in that realm. But I, what, for me to make this work, from a standpoint of reasonable return, I think it's got to be a smaller square footage, and I'm thinking it doesn't work for the family anymore, which makes it not work on this lot. And I apologize for that. Um, so I think that that is a good point, and I, I would say that I do think it's more in the reasonable return issue and not in the... Um, Essential character. The, or in the fourth criteria about whether it was this landowner or prior landowner. The issue that you're dealing with is that there are two existing cottages on the lot. And that, you know, that's an issue from pre-zoning. It wasn't any, um, it, it wasn't a landowner or any previous landowner. Um, what you're faced with now is this issue of, okay, then what can they do? And, and when, when recapping this, I was trying to do it just as a, as a way of background, understanding that the board had lived through this. Mm -hmm. And um, I think at that time, it was thought the lots couldn't be divided. Um, you, you know, as, I, as I've said, and I think I've explained under the, the language of the ordinance why I think that they can be, um, and that's not before you, but it does come into the reasonable return, and it comes in in this way. Um, what you heard was you heard the previous owners, um, and I and I think you know they had, as they represented, they thought that cottages were in great shape. I don't mm -hmm. think that they were trying to 
they did think the cottages were in great shape. As, as, as you heard here, they're, you know, they were in tears almost on the, knowing that they were selling them to someone who was looking for a, a tear down and rebuild. Um, that, um, but it comes to the fact that there are different, completely different markets, right? If you can sell one non-conforming lot, one non-conforming cottage on a lot, kind of regardless of the size of the lot and regardless of the size of the cottage, you're going to find someone that's fine having, you know, one house that they can come in and they'll kind of fit it whatever they're allowed to do, probably as of right, without a variance, just whatever little expansion they can do on their non-conforming structure. Mm -hmm. You'll find someone that can come in and buy that because they got a cottage down at Higgins Beach, and that's that's a market that's mm -hmm. there, right? Mm -hmm. And if and that you know as you, that may end up what ends up being what happens here if we can't work a way to find that we've met the criteria, but I think that we can get there. And what we saw is when it was marketed with the idea that it couldn't be split, right? There were no purchasers. But can I the, can I challenge you there? Yep. A couple of things we've learned tonight, and a couple of things we believed was the case, and I'm in the. the the real estate universe. Everything has one. There's, there's one reason why property doesn't sell. We right. have maybe two. One is it's on a government waste site. The other is it's priced too high. And it's obvious that these borrowers, the sellers previously, didn't negotiate the prices down, and so they believed they had a property <coughs> with no value, but just didn't have the value they wanted it to have. Except, and so the, the challenge comes back to what is a reasonable re reasonable return. Well, their reasonable return was never set. We never voted on whether or not they should divide it because, to be candid with you, had we voted on it, we would have turned it down for the reasonable return requirement because they, it was obvious that they were, they were selling, their price was unreasonable. It would have sold because if, something, if nothing else, somebody would have turned it into a garage or torn it down, the second cottage. We know there's a value there. So and we're not that naive. They just didn't want to sell it for what they sold it for. And in, it, my, it tied to that, it, you know, whether or not, and one of the reasons that I think you, Mr. Loisel brought up what he brought up is if they were lied to, um, that's another whole conversation, but that's not about us. Um, they've got some serious issues there because they knew well and, as you know, acknowledged that they knew that somebody had to come beforehand. The and previous owners. Right. And so if they were lied to, I think that's another whole conversation. It's just not the purview of the board. Uh, but it does bring up a legitimate question as to did some did the other person cause this problem? Right. Uh, but I don't think we're in a situation where we're saying that we can't meet the variance criteria and instead that the answer is a, a lawsuit by you know one owner against the previous owner when people, you know, that's not what we're trying to invite. What we're trying to look at is, okay, given what we have here where we've got two existing cottages and the grandfathered use <coughs> is still there and you can't, when we come for a variance asking to very specific dimensional requirements that we need to fit here, it's, the board can't ask us to give up the non-conforming uses. You've already heard they're, they're allowed to have two dwelling units, even even though part of it is in the shoreland zone, right? They're allowed to keep that grandfathered use of the of the two yeah, dwelling units. We're not asking we're not asking for that. Right. Okay. So but but you know what you're saying is that when it's priced too low, there's there's an issue where someone would be willing to come and purchase this property as if it only had one structure on it, right? They'll they would buy what they thought they could do a tear down and rebuild for one structure. Um, but the board here is dealing with a lot that had two. And the analysis necessarily changes not that, you know, if there, this were an unbuilt lot or if it only had one house on it, would someone be able to settle on a reasonable price that was a tear down and rebuild um, where you could come back with one structure? The proof is yes, they bought the property. Well, they bought it with the misunderstanding that they could do. They what can't. They probably could, if it were yeah. consistent with what the board. And again, we don't know where the board's going to go here, but they probably could if it were consistent with what the board believed was number one, meeting 
number one, the first criteria, and the third criteria. <coughs> the challenge was, if they were lied to, all, you know, all bets are off. I can't help them there. But, and I don't want to belabor it, but well, let's do this before we jump into it. Can, mm -hmm. Make sure we get all of us to answer the, our views so you can attack them all okay. at once. And I don't mean attack in a negative way. Okay. Well, what, what I had heard at, at our last meeting, uh, or at the meeting prior to, uh, was that, yes, we would probably be more comfortable having a single unit, having those units put together. But I, what I'd never, ever heard there was that you can put any size thing that you want on here. It doesn't matter. You just put anything you want as long as it's one. I, I never heard that. And that was never part of the conversation. And it seems like that's where this has gone is that, hey, we can put one unit so we can just do anything we want. And that's, that's, not, that's not what we discussed. Right, and I, and I think uh, um, that's a good point. To to put a finer point on it, if we think about this, and what we're saying is we need to think about it as, as two units. Um, one of the units, in terms of total livable space, not just building area, this is the two floors, it's 720 square feet. That's a really small um, unit. N I don't think anyone has an issue if these were separate lots or if we were coming and treating, you know, a teardown of one and then a teardown of the other separately, that we could replace one with, a 720 square foot, like, essentially loft over a kitchen area. Yeah, but, but um, not a three story. Right, so then we move to the second one, but this is, I guess, what I'm saying, and this is where it gets more difficult. You're, you're not comparing it, you're, you're dealing with, at that point, a smaller lot area on which you can fit the livable space for one single family dwelling. And this building that they're proposing is, got two floors of livable area. The first floor has about 1,100 square feet. The second floor has about 1,000 square feet. So we're talking about about a 2,100 square foot home. There's been a lot of talk about the height. As the board is aware, a big thing driving this height thing is you've heard there's no room in the ceiling thing. We've got in the two floors where there's livable space, we can't go down anymore. We've got eight foot four and seven foot eight. There's not room to get a whole lot more. The height is mainly driven by the fact that we're five feet above grade because of the erosion hazard and because in that above grade area we need at least three feet of completely clear clearance so that we can't have any of the mechanical systems underneath, let alone that they would also be subject to the elements and stuff. So essentially that's where the attic space comes in is to fit those not as additional living space um, but as a way to kind of fit the, those additional things so that you can get what is a three-bedroom house that has 2,100 square feet, which that living area isn't out of scale, right? And so the context becomes, and this is where it's difficult. On the one hand, you're thinking about what's the reasonable rate of return in terms of this is out of scale for the rest of the neighborhood. In that context, you have to think about it as these two separate houses. Well, we really then don't. separately, no, well, so I, I just, and I, and I don't think, I don't think you'll completely disagree with me. I have a problem with have, I, I, I'll be okay. candid with you. Everybody I, says we have to do okay, something. Right. The way that I'm proposing <laughs> that you think about it is for that particular first part of that criteria, you're thinking about it as two separate houses. Then you're thinking about, and this gets more toward the third criteria, where does it meet the essential character of the neighborhood as the basic shape? and what the law tells us that we're supposed to look at when we do that, right? When, we've, when we're only in three and not in the part of three that overlaps with one, when we're only in three, it tells us that we have to look to the rest of the ordinance for the way that we evaluate it, right? So that when, in that case, you're looking at, okay, does this structure, what are the things that it needs a variance from? Side setback, front setback, and uh, the building area. In those things, elsewhere in the locality, um, are there similar structures that have the same kind of side setback, front setback, and buildable area? And we've, tr we've showed you structures that we think you should be able to answer that yes. The other guiding principle is that the existing character of the exact locality as it exists now are the existing nonconformities. And that's part of why the board has this practice where you say, and if you can reduce each of the existing nonconformities, that's all the better because that helps you answer number three all by itself. No, in I the disagree. part 
I would disagree. In the part that... Just so you know. Okay. In the part of number three that separates, that's separate from number one. So not in the part where they're overlapped. But in the part that's completely separate, I think the, the Cole case that, we, that I discussed earlier where it says you look to the existing requirements of the ordinance for the way that you evaluate that. So you're also, um, I would propose that you're, you're not supposed to look at what have other people been able to do with a variance? When you say, when there was some talk about, oh, you know, this is this big or this is that big, but we don't know what they started at. That's not appropriate to number three or the part of number three that, that gets to the essential character, right? The essential character we're looking at, what exists there now? And it doesn't matter how they got there. You're saying what exists there now such that if what we are proposing and what we get to is inconsistent with what exists there now, then it doesn't meet the essential character. And let in me, that analysis, I, I would said say... That, let me stop you for a sec, because I said that. Okay. That was in a retort to the argument that was being made that said, look, all these houses are really big, and you guys have been approving these things all day long. Well, to be candid with you, if something's already three stories high, and they redesigned it and added another bedroom... That's a totally different right. conversation, and it, so that was in retort, right. not in not in the debate. Right, and that. so that's why. And again, I'm, I feel like I'm talking fast because I know that it's okay. late, and I don't want that to come across as combative because right. I think that you're exactly right, and in, in a sense, that's the same point I'm making. As I've said, I feel like there are parts of the third element that intersect with the first element, um, and in those, the analysis is slightly different, and in those, I think that's where you're right where it is more, you know, what have other people started with versus where did they end. Other things, though, that I heard said were things like, well, this house, that's too big, right? In terms of the part of element three that's completely separate from element one, so that this is too big goes into the part that overlaps with element one. The part that's completely separate, you, it, the board can't, now say, well, what's there right now is too big for my preference, right? It's there, and that's the size, so that's what establishes the character of the locality. What the board can say, and what you guys have been careful about, is we don't know exactly what locality is. So it does matter where these, how close these big houses are. But I, define, I, I, I define locality as very small. Okay, and, we, and we've seen yeah. things that are within, you know, 60 feet, right, that are... And, and Similar eight size. Feet. <coughs> and eight right. Feet. And and eight feet. <laughs> but but remember, it's not um, one property doesn't prevent um, you from meeting the essential character of the locality. One neighbor. And so this is again why what I'm proposing in one way for the board to think about. And I'm not. I don't want to say that you have to do this because I know that everyone um, will think about it and vote their own way. Um, one way I, I'm proposing you can think about this is that the part of elements one and three that overlap and merge into one, that's where it's appropriate to think about, okay, what are we starting with and how big is, you know, um, how much is the ask. When you're doing that, I think it is important to remember, and, and, and for me, I find it helpful to think about it as two separate structures. Right? And this, again, it doesn't, I'm not saying we have the right to do this because then we wouldn't be before you. This is just a way to think about it. One structure, that's 720 square feet of the living space and that's about a third of the building length, right? And we, I think no one has an issue with that being kind of the growth of one existing building. What I'm proposing is that reasonable return and this reasonableness standard that we're talking about where these two overlap, that's where we've got, now we're looking at just the house without the accessory unit. Because the accessory unit comes from the fact that there's this second structure. And you're looking at a house that is then really about 45 feet in depth for this one house unit, and really about 2,100 square feet of living space and three bedrooms. And so you don't have to agree with me, but I'm just proposing that that is reasonable in terms of the reasonable rate of return. Let me give you a kind of a... Okay. a yeah, you want to jump in? Go ahead. 
I feel like we've really, really massaged this over and over and circle and circle. I, I think what really is looming here is question one. Question one states reasonable return. We as a board, I think, have acted favorably. We've thrown that into a gray area where we've allowed it to our interpretation, where I think it should be more black and white. And if this was black and white, question one, it'd clearly be a no. For in my mind, it would clearly be a no. But we've, like I said, we've thrown to the gray area where we say, okay, that's okay. So what we've said all along is we don't like the scale. This is at the crux of it. So here we go. We come back again. The scale is still big, and it's obviously not. And it's So we're going to overlap number three with number one, where one's gray, but now that three doesn't really work that well for us, that one is obviously going to be a no answer, where if number three, the scale was good, we go back to where it should be black and white, but we let it be gray, and we voted favorably for many people coming through here that, okay, three, we like the scale of it, we think it's in keeping, okay, we will allow it to pass on the one criteria, well, really, in reality, there's not much that gets beyond one, really, when you right. think about it. it not and I, and I, I appreciate that, and I think, you know, in a, in a sense, this is probably, at least at Higgins Beach, the last application where one will be in the gray area, right, because that's part of what this new code was attempting Correct. to address, so that it's not that you're asking, the zoning board isn't reviewing every new house that's going up at Higgins Beach, which is essentially what happens now, right? And so, so the right fix for that is a legislative fix, and that's happening. Right now, we're under the ordinance as we have it. The board has acknowledged their standard practice has been to treat this as gray, and, and it's appropriate to continue that for this, for fairness, Mm -hmm. for this one last application. So that's where we are. Let me jump um, in halfway, though. Two things. Number one, the accessory unit standard as set back when it was originally set was 750 square feet. So if we're going to take fair and we're going to take standard and we're going to take consistency, 750 square feet, I wrote the ordinance, so I know what it is, I know why it was written that way, uh, would be a reasonable accessory unit. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you get 750 square feet. And ours is 720. So darn close. We'll give you an extra 20 feet. Uh, 30. We'll take it from there. 30, 30 feet. Right. We'll give you an extra 30 feet. And uh, so that's considered what we would, that was the maximum, by the way, not the minimum. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the maximum. It was the maximum that could be with 750 square feet. It's since, I, mean, I think, been moved to 1,000. But prior to that, the maximum it could be was 750 square feet. So if you take the 750 square feet, then you take the front house, so you're going to make the argument you're making, mm -hmm. and make that as, as big as reasonable based on its footprint, based on whatever, you still don't come up to what you come up with. And the other thing I'd throw at you, so, so if, this was, if you were going at it and saying, we're going to take 750 square feet as an accessory unit, which is what we're making the argument for, not a two-family, 750 square feet was voted on by a town council, 7-0, so everybody agreed. It worked for seven years before it got changed. So, and numerous people have been through this board and signed off on 750 square feet, and I've got plenty of designs to show it. Now you take this other unit that's going to be the master plan of the property. You, quote, unquote, as he suggested, butt them together, and you go up on height on that. Let's say we take full advantage of the three stories. You're still well below what your square footage is based on what's being proposed here. And I go one step further. If we honestly look at this, if you took that whole building and you didn't do all the cuts and marks and everything else, how many extra square foot could you even get out of it? You're so close to the maximum use of, if you took that box and just made it a giant box, you, percentage wise, it's about as close to maximum as it can get. 35 feet across, one whatever feet wide, 67 feet long. The square footage of that building really doesn't change much. It, so, so we've taken, right off the bat, the, the accessory unit issue comes off the table for me because I'm okay with 750. I got no problem with it. It's been standard for 10 years. But then on top of that, we're taking and saying, well, we're going to take that 750 and then we're going to throw on top of that <coughs> on and on and on. And so when you look at the character and you look at the, the number one, which is the land in question can't yield a reasonable return, 
unless the variance is granted. Number one, we, we that marker has only been established by the fact, in fact, it can be done. Now, they may have been lied to, which takes it off the table, if that's the case. However, if the sellers never volunteered to drop the price to a reasonable price, I have to believe that, well, I know that that property has value because numerous people would come in and raise those two units, just like the applicant plans to do, and build something on there. And they've been paying full price for these pieces of property and, in fact, doing just that. And you can look at every single lake, every single shorefront property in the entire state and see that happens. But most of those are restricted to 15% <coughs> expansions. because And that's different codes, different reasons. I'm not debating that. But if you look at the reasonableness compared to what is being asked by most measures, the reasonableness based on other criteria, not these criteria, but other criteria, it's, it's reasonable for this board to look at you and say, you're getting as much maximum as you can possibly get, and we're, we're giving you both, we're giving you the square, we're giving you the accessory unit, no problem, we're giving you that, it's fine. They're not a two unit, it's an accessory unit. <coughs> uh, we're giving you that, fine, you get 750. You want 1,000, we'll give you 1,000. But then we go on top of that, and we're going bigger and bigger and bigger. And again, from a from a to the combined content, you're looking at I don't know how much bigger if you just made this thing a giant box. And I'll tell you what I did. I took two cardboard boxes. I cut them out, put them side by side. I put three buildings, actually two, and then the other one, to get a feel. You, the visual, as close as I could get to a visual. So I'm trying to get my arms around this, and again, I tell you, I literally sit in your shoes and say, what would I do? And I sit in their shoes, and I try and go, what would they do? So I make all my, I, I, I use the example I use, if I were king, what would I do? And I got to tell you, I can't get my arms around even the argument of the AC combination. I do not believe it even comes close to me in the essential character of the locality. I don't even think it comes in the same realm of the character. I, I don't. And, and again, that's 100% subjective, but I don't. And land does really yield a reasonable return. It does. They didn't prove it because they never dropped the price to a point that it should have been at. And the proof is they wouldn't negotiate with your, your, your client, which says they were just stubborn. So I appreciate that position, and, and I'd like the chance to respond to some of those points, but I want to do it in a way where I'm, what I'm proposing is essentially another way to think about it, and I think that your way of thinking about it is reasonable, um, and, um, and that you don't necessarily have to come around to my way of thinking about it, um, but that your way of thinking about it and my way of thinking about it, I propose are going to be two different reasonable ways of I'll thinking about it. and and. You know, various members of the board, whether or not you change your mind, um, may find it helpful to think about it. In a way. So, be so be before you answer, can yep. I jump on that one more thought? Because then we may be able to close it right out on yeah. this one. Listening to the argument that just or the discussion that just went on, your your point about having you've got an accessory unit that's worth so much footage, and then you get the main building that's worth so much footage. Now step away from that, and you're somebody walking down the street and you see this two-unit building, and you're like, huh, look how big that is. That's got to that's gotta be a main house and accessory unit. By the way, you can't see the primary, the secondary well, unit. You know what I'm saying? That never street. comes to your mind. That, that's got to be a house and accessory unit. It's so big. So we know this because we're going around the design, but the people walking by are going to say, that's a huge house. That's a huge one-family house. No, legally, that's a house and accessory unit. Nobody's going to be thinking like that. It's, wow, look at the size of that thing. Right. But what I would propose is that the reason that that doesn't work in this situation is because there are two existing structures. Oh, right. I understand. Right. So, but now when I walk by the property, I see two structures. Hey, that place has got two buildings on it. Right. And you can't. And I can like see it. But when I see one building that's big, it's like, ha-ha, that's not two buildings. That's one. Now, uh, right. Now, again. If you go back to the two structures, because you seem to like to go to there, mm -hmm. if you take the first structure, the main structure, and you went up two stories, we're not going to let you take a little teeny small structure and go up two stories. So you're not going to get that same square footage that you're looking at two stories tall in two different structures. Okay, so all we're saying is that bring this thing down to size, because it, 
it, it, it just doesn't fit the character of the neighborhood. And then I think the question is, does it still meet the needs of the family? Because they've got expectations. If they're going to put a certain amount of capital in this, I'm sure they're saying, we want to live in it and we want this. We want X. So I can understand why there may be a disconnect there. Because they, if you're going to raz two buildings, put a new building up, I want to get the best property I can as the owner. But from where we sit, it's not like that. right? We've got to answer the questions and keep going. Now you, so, um, sorry. So I do think it's helpful to, to think about it in two buildings, but it, it's difficult when we talk about two buildings and accessory unit, right? It's, it's helpful. Remember, an accessory unit is permitted as of right in the zone, notwithstanding the shoreland zoning issue, which isn't an issue here. But um, that's different from two single-family units, which was what's allowed, mm -hmm. right? So essentially... In some ways, it's thinking about this as a, as a, as a duplex. I'm, I'm using right. the term that your clients have been using, which is an accessory unit. Right. Uh, it doesn't even need a kitchen because you can't cook. Right. So when I'm hearing the descriptions, I'm hearing accessory unit. I'm not hearing two units. I so think that's where that comes from. I think, I think it does have a, a kitchen, as that which would be fine, considered. But, but I mean, my yeah. point being, from the presentations from day one, it's right. Well, it's because, been, because that is what's being proposed right. here but in terms of what we're starting from in terms of what this fits in we're starting from what could be a duplex right we could be having two units that were roughly equal size mm -hmm. and you know right now you know, this is again the existing structures, you can do a certain amount just as of right without a variance in terms of improving. Yeah, one's in the We're beyond it, right? But, um, but what's reasonable if you took each structure separately and kind of built it up on, in some ways, I think it's helpful to think about is the two lots, whether or not you divide it, but you built it up. Then I think you would get close to, you know, if I add the 720 to the 2100 and I get 28 and I divide that by two and I get 1400 square feet of livable space for what is starting out is now two single family houses, 1400 square feet of livable space per house, I, mean, I would suggest is reasonable. And, and again, you don't have to accept, I'm just, this is trying to be true. helpful. Um, as just another way of thinking about it. But we um, we'd never would have allowed that on a 50 by 50 lot, which is what you'd have. Right. My guess if is you they weren't get expanded. Right. They'd say you could replace it as is, but no more than that. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what would happen. So I, I see your argument, but I, I so don't so so the the issue is if you had a single family house on one lot, I guess if you're right that you would never allow. A single-family house it's it's that subjective. exists to get up to 1,400 square feet, which isn't a terribly large single-family house. But for a 50 by 50 lot, it is. I mean, that's that's 2,500 square feet, and you wouldn't put a 1,400 square foot. That's 50 percent. And I know you do. I'm thinking in terms of one level, but right. And so and so when we get to the one level, that's why that's why we were able to shrink the existing nonconformance in every way. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest, and it might not be the case, but I would suggest that it, I think it actually, if we were before the board saying, look, we can shrink the existing nonconformance in every way as to what we need a variance from, and our structure is, is under 30 feet, and we have 1,400 square feet of livable space, I think that is reasonable, and I think the board, I think, I think it would be reasonable for a board or some board members to say, yeah, that is reasonable. Okay. And that's, that's, that's just that's okay. the way yeah. of thinking about yeah. it that we're suggesting. And yeah. not that you have to follow that, but that some board members may find that helpful, that really what we're dealing with is as if we were coming and saying, look, we've shrunk on this house, we've shrunk the nonconformance in every way, and it's under the height limit of 30 feet, and it's only 1,400 square feet of total livable space. And look, oh, we've done that over here. Okay, now we've done each of those two things. Oh, and now we jam it together. And so that's the thinking of how we get there. And you don't have to accept no, that. Let's come and talk about a different subject tied yeah. to it, though. See, I, the floor, one of the major flaws for me is I do not believe you need the third floor for, for 
uh, utilities. Uh, you look at most houses that are built now, they're using the Fujitsu uh, units that are, are very energy efficient. They hang on the side of the dime building. The, wa the water tanks now are about, what, four inches by three feet. The electrical panel is an electrical panel. It, it can be anywhere behind anything. So I do not philosophically believe the argument holds that you need the third floor to provide all of those utilities. That's just an opinion. But i got to be candid with you. I know that houses are built all day long on slabs without a necessity to go to a third floor to provide, to provide the, the component. And so if I could speak to a little bit of why that ended up there, part of the reason that the third floor, the storage space on the third floor is, um, is as tall as it is, was in an effort to match the character of the locality in that the existing, the code that's coming down, the future code. I don't know what it is. Um, it has a minimum roof pitch of nine over 12. Um, I honestly don't know. You right. Could, you could say but that. I guess th I'm just so I. It do, that's my understanding is that it does. And so the idea was okay, we need these two sto feet of or two floors of livable space, and we want all of the bedrooms just on the second floor, and we don't care about the size of the attic space. If the only issue was we're going to change the pitch of the roof down to lower it so that that area, there's no question that it's not tall enough to be livable. I think that is a change that, that we would say, if that's all it is, we can come back and do that. The, the reason that it's as tall as it is is not because they want some future living area in, in the future. It's because the, um, in, this, in, in the effort of the, the dance between knowing what was coming down and, you know, trying to look at these future criteria and see what of those was the Higgins Beach area saying what we want. The interpretation was we don't want a flat roof or a really like close to flat roof. Um, our design criteria say we want a certain steep, steep enough pitch that you can then bump out with dormers. And we don't want the dormers because it's not livable space that we're asking for up there. So if the only issue is you think we should be shrinking the just the roof line down so that it's clear that that's just storage area and we gain, I, what would we gain, a foot or a couple feet? You might be, you might be able to gain a foot and a half, maybe. The, 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 here's the problem with that, that argument, and I, it, you, because you, you, did, you weren't here, you, I'm sure you've listened to the tapes, mm -hmm. but as you know, your, your clients have taken a different position on that and in the past, and they said, we don't want to be held to the new standards. And in fact, you're pushing us to the new standards right. in violation of our rights. Right. When in fact, I don't think any of us even know what the new requirements are. We suggested that, well, through Brian, uh, we suggested that you might want them because we're not going to approve this. Yeah. Uh, so no, and that's not better. that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm explaining how that got in here in terms yeah. of the room that we have to play with in terms of we were saying a certain thing meets our needs. This is what we need. And if we're saying, well, well, the thing that the too much ask is that we're worried that this other floor isn't really just storage and that it's it's eventual living space. We don't. They don't need that. They they really just need it as a little storage and the um, the mechanical stuff. And we can bring the pitch of the roof down. Um, the the only reason it got in was not because we were saying that the only standard that'll meet the character is this pitch this minimum roof pitch that is going to be adopted or likely to be adopted, it was that as part of trying to fit everything on the two floors to be able to get those bedrooms in so that they weren't all in the ease with dormers and so that you had some storage space and the ability to fit some mechanical systems, it was the pitch of the roof that got that to be taller, right? So as you've heard now, what, what deals with the height? We've got the 15 feet elevation that we're forced to have. We've got a very reasonable one story floor at eight foot four. We've got a very reasonable second floor at um, seven foot eight. And then we've got this other area above, which if the only thing is that we, we want to shrink that space, then that would be the one thing that I would ask, um, let us come back one more time to present that. Because the, the, 
But let me be well, honest. I don't, think, our... I don't think that gets it. Okay. I, I well, and, and if it yeah. doesn't, then then by all means, we should we should vote as uh, let's, let's, let's on continue down what you have okay, in front sorry. of you. Okay. Sorry. Number number two. Mm -hmm. I think we can all agree that the first sentence is true. Anybody disagree with that? Yes. No. Uh, you disagree? No, I agree. You it's agree? true. Right. Number the second sentence uh, that the lot was therefore marketed and sold to the date for that very purpose. Um, if it was, they were misled and they need to deal with that. But that has nothing to do with us. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, again, um, in the process, somebody may try to take the tapes. I, I'm going to play them at the end just to get them in document. But we made it very clear that they needed to come prior to buying the property to the board. And I've, I've seen the tapes in that is clear. <coughs> you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I don't do that because I hate hearing my voice. Uh, number three, uh, consistent with the board's suggestion, the Dayton's applied for variance to construct single uh, structure in place of the two existing cottages. The board first reviewed this application in August. I would hope that you would say that is no longer accurate based on the findings of fact that that just never was said. Uh, I guess I'm sorry. So if this was mostly procedural background, I don't know if it helps to skip over this. I don't think any of this stuff I, that's up front is necessary. I guess what I'm saying, I wasn't saying that the the Daytons came because the board had suggested they want to see this application. You wanted to see it before the sale had occurred. My, um, my concern is, and I'll be candid with you. My concern is, and I'll be just. My job is to make sure the town is safe. Right. That's all I care about. Okay. So I'll, let me just clear it up and say that we're not taking the position that the board um, told us we would be entitled to this, and that we're therefore entitled to it. So to the extent that that's the worry, Th that good, we'll, that we'll take, take that off the table for. Um, Based on the feedback they received from the board in August, the Daytons received their application to reduce the size of their proposed house. The board reviewed these revisions in its September meeting. I would say that that is a true statement. However, I do not believe that the intent was heard, whether by accident or just by sheer denial of where we were going. Uh, the, it, was, it was de minimis. It was yeah. one foot on one side, one foot on the other. And, I think from hearing the board and again the tape, you were the chair on that meeting. Yeah, my note that I had put here is I, I added to the sentences that the board reviewed these revisions at, at its September's meeting, and I said, and the board's requests were not met. Meaning, when we were asked for a reduction, the reduction wasn't big enough. That first application that came in would had a full dormer on the third floor. And it was finished on the third floor. Right. When I looked at the notes in August, we asked you to reduce the envelope. Well, I took the whole third floor dormer off and all that. What elevation did it change? It only came down two feet. Well, it changed the whole, uh, whole dormer coming off the third floor. That's a big change. It might not change the overall height above grade. Uh, that was the position. It was a, it was the a, it was the, the issue change. of the board when I listened to the tape, I, I came out right and said it. I didn't go to the meeting. I wasn't at the meeting. I have no tie to that meeting. I got no emotional gain on it. <clears throat> I sat here in this meeting and I said, what I heard on TV watching that meeting was this would be a really good cape. That's <laughs> what I heard. And I don't mean a cape in the design of a cape, but I mean in that kind of a structure is what I heard. And I didn't... And when you say that type, you mean the scale of the structure? The scale. Okay. When I was talking scale, I was seeing a traditional style New England large, I didn't even talk about the length, I didn't care about that. But what I heard from the board in, I don't believe was heard, and I think that uh, Mrs. Dayton stated it fairly clearly earlier in the meeting, which is she has no intent of being that size, and I respect that. I mean, I, I can't hate her for that, I don't hate her for it. But in the same vein, if in fact this land just can't fit what Mrs. Dayton needs, it can't fit it, but what this board very clearly said, and I wasn't at the meeting, and I heard it, and I listened to it, and I didn't talk to anybody. What I heard was this is way out of scope. And so that's why, I, and I said that at the second meeting. And we come back to the third meeting, and 
the, the results still haven't changed. Yeah, we've cut, you know, we've done some measures, and, but the, the message didn't get across. Whether that's our fault or not, I don't know. But I can tell you the message didn't get heard. And, and, and Mr. Wilson, when I said, and the board's requests weren't met, that's me thinking in my head. I'm just saying the perception when I looked at the drawing is like, they, they didn't meet what I meant. So just, and that's I, just percep my perception of what I saw on paper. If I could summarize what I think I'm hearing the board say is essentially, and you said this at the end of the last meeting, if we were on the same footprint, but um, 12 feet, six feet, whatever it is, shorter in height, the board would say that would probably meet these criteria. I said that I, I, I think I, the, my usual defensive move is this is what I think. Yeah, I'm no, no. Speaking for right. me. So th I guess that's why I just wanted to kind of go down. I'm seeing a lot of head shaking. So if we could just go down and have the board say whether. I would bet that if this came back as a dormered style property, eliminating that third floor because I don't buy the fact that you need anything on that third floor to make this thing a functional building. Okay. I believe all of that can be done either on a wall in a closet or on the outside of the building with heat pumps. Okay. Um, I would believe that <coughs> if I saw that, and again, I would never want to see Mr. Wilson change his design styles, but, and this would change his right. design styles, mm -hmm. but, because he builds a beautiful home. But this may just not be the property okay. for it. And so I guess I'm seeing a lot of heads nodding, and I'm just wondering if we can just go down the board and if we could, if yeah, it's okay with you, to just yeah. get a temperature of whether people agree with yeah. that position or, or they're it's not binding somewhere else. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when I was talking about the reduction in scale, I was thinking six, eight feet on the roof line and five to ten feet in length. Not that that could meet the difference, but I was thinking more 55 by 25, something like that. But... Then again, you've got to, you've got what the family needs, and you've got to make that work. I I make it a habit of not discussing things subjectively. It's part of my job, and uh, this is very difficult for me. But I will say that uh, none of my concern regards with how the accessory unit currently stands. That is not an issue for me personally. What I see with the audience and the feedback that we get is. Uh, uh, the gentleman, the brother-in-law, uh, who Scott, who came up early and, and said that um, he said that the half story, technically half story, third floor was the biggest issue for him. I guess that's all I'll say. I, I would have to agree. I, I think that uh, you bring the roof line down, not not one foot, but you bring it down you know, six eight feet. I, I I could probably live with that. Yeah. In, in, Dormer is probably a good idea. I, I do have some very specific thoughts on the property, and, and really most of them pertain to the neighbors, the McGoldricks is who I feel for the most in terms of that. So if I was to be specific, I would say, Mr. Wilson, you know, a second floor, maybe five foot knee walls going into a 12 pitch, shed dormers off that. I think you can, I think this Dayton Getter House, I think it's possible to get, I don't mind the length you got, you for, for the board, I don't mind the length, because I think I can look. from the street, Walt's house looks beautiful, the length of it doesn't affect me, because you don't really, ca you wouldn't really capture that, you'd really have to be looking down there, and the way Walt has got to step back, I think it's, it's nice, but I think, I think there's a way to, to get what Mrs. Dayton wants here, I do. I, I think she can stick with the property. I really believe that. And I believe you can get a lot of goodies in there. I just think you have to just peel it back a little bit, maybe some slope ceilings in the second floor to, to achieve that from the outside, that outside dimension. If anybody can do it, you know, Walter can. I know that. That's my hope. And I think at the same time, you, you make us happy because it makes me happy because I... I feel for the McGoldricks, I really do, and I feel for you, Mrs. Dayton. I, I, I feel for both sides, and, and I think that's what's driving my decision. I think I allow that, number one, to be gray because I want you to get what you want, but I also want to be respectful for the neighbors, and, and I, I think there is a solution, and I, and, I, and I think Walter can come up with that. I think you can get your bedrooms, you can get your accessory unit, Maybe you prioritize a couple things. Maybe you cut back on the kitchenette area. I don't know because your daughter doesn't cook. I don't. I don't know how much of a kitchen she needs. And 
hate I, I hate for you to go back and spend more money as well. I, I, I do, but that I'm being very specific about what I think could happen there, and that's what I would be happy with. I think it's it's the height and the towering effect it has to the neighbors is is, is obviously our biggest. It seems like our biggest to obstacle. Be to be candid with you, my guess is if you sat down with the code enforcement officer, he could tell you exactly what we probably pass. Okay, and it, just. If we could um, get to the one last board member, and then I think. Uh, sure. Yeah, I, I had already spoken to that. And, okay. And I, and I too, I, I I feel for both sides in this. Uh, you know, I know Mrs. Dayton has had her, her heart set on this place, and uh, she may still find that if you scale it back, that it won't work. But on the other hand, that there may there's a good chance. It sounds like these guys have got a lot more experience in building than I do. There may be a good chance that you can. So, if I may, um, and um, and I put this uh, completely at your feet uh, as the chairman, but um, what I would propose, based on our discussion earlier and what I've heard here, is if maybe we could move to voting on each of the specific criteria, where I'll just rest on what I've written, um, with perhaps if the board is amenable, a motion along the lines that you had talked about. That's something that, if there were a proposal in line with what we've heard here, which I think is relatively consistent in terms of a standard of what would, uh, would or wouldn't be significantly different for some future application, then I think we've been around it enough times that people are, are thinking about it in the way that they're going to think about it. So I throw that to you as a possible. And you know, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, so I need a little bit of help here. Um, my understanding mm -hmm. per doing this for way too many years, as some people would say, is that whatever is brought forward at a meeting is fair game at the Superior Court, um, including this document. Yes, everything in writing is part of the record. We haven't dealt with this piece of paper completely, so my concern is that by just setting this off to the side and voting, it opens us up to the Supreme Court, the Superior Court, which will end up costing the town a ton of money, you a ton of money, and it'll get, rem it'll get remitted back to us to clarify. Okay, and, and so here's what, what I would say, is what's important is that when you go through and you vote on each criteria, you make a statement as to what you as the board are finding and why. Um, this is before you, so this is my argument, but you don't have to, we've had the general back and forth on all of that. We've addressed every issue that I've raised in some way or another in our discussion, and you're not required to go and refute it point by point. All you need to do for the Superior Court is make a statement that makes clear the reason that you as the board are adopting um, so I get to put all these things, as I've said, arguments in front of you and ways I think that you could think about it and you've had other ways to think about it, and you're free to accept any of those. In other and words, then when you vote, they state the findings yeah. of their facts exactly. and their conclusions exactly. based on those facts. That's all that the court is going to care so about. All you have you're to not do agreeing to everything that's in this letter. Well, right? my concern is, and, and, and so I, I, I can honestly <coughs> say, and all these have been doing this, every case that's gone to Superior Court, I think there's only been four we want. There's a reason. Um, I I do not feel comfortable without addressing each item, and I, and and okay. I, I know that's a pain in the butt. But the only other alternative would be to say this is not applicable. We're taking it off the table, and then we're going with just the criteria. I would feel more comfortable with that. But I think there are things in here that give enough of an argument that we're gonna that, that we don't want to get to Superior Court. Okay. If somebody brings an attorney in. I assume we're going to Superior Court. That's what I'm assuming. We may not be, but I'm assuming. It. And so as the chairman, I feel I have a responsibility to the community that, uh, and I've witnessed Naples where they can't seem to find enough reasons to be in the Superior Court. <laughs> and then I see Scarborough where we've won every battle since I've been on the board. And as I said in- No, and I do, you're, you're exactly right that to the extent that you're more thorough as opposed to less, that it will be appreciated by the court. But if I guess what I would propose is why don't we step through and do each of the criteria and uh, maybe come back to whether or not anyone wants to adopt a motion similar to what you had proposed based on 
And, and maybe what we can do is I can yeah. throttle through these items. To then get the well, Does the board can, can I make a, can I make a suggestion, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chair? If you look right below item five, the summary that goes into the U.S. Constitution item, and then it goes down into the stat statistics questions one through seven, right, and then eight that we're not going to talk about those, and then it goes down into the criteria anyway, about two paragraphs after that. So we're really just dealing with the... We're we'll talking about three paragraphs if you want to run through it. Well, the one thing that I would say is that I think that the, um, the actual facts will be important for you to find in terms of what the minimum lot area is and stuff. So if there are specific things, I think the requested variance, what I tried to say is, here's what the rule says, yeah. here's what our plan is, and the board does need to make those findings. And I so guess what I'm saying is I don't think we're arguing the numbers. I think your statistics are right. Okay. So you know, if that's the case, I think we could just address those all in one and just skip over them. But if there are, if people think that there are misstatements of fact in terms of the, the that what I said the law was or what I said the, the, plan, the plan said don't match up to what the facts are on the ground, then I think we, do, we would need to address it. Okay. So let me try and push through this as fast okay. as I can, and, and we'll see if we can kind of keep the talk down to a minimum. But at the same time, I don't want to discount anything you have to say. The Dayton's current proposed, I'm not going to read everything in, but the Dayton's current proposed revisions reflect the continued willingness to work with the board in this application. I'll take that at face value. At this point, they have considerable investment back expectations. To me, that is somewhat of a threat. I don't think it's meant that way, but that implies that this board has a responsibility to recover the costs that the Daytons have chosen to spend. That's, in my opinion, very important to differentiate. If they don't have to come back. They don't have to go hire anybody. We've made it pretty clear, and on this board, uh, there is no confusion about the fact that they, in, if they relied on anything from this board, it should have been Okay, and, I, and I, I hope I've addressed that previously. That okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and the next statement then is um, the board's previous guidance. Uh, the board would support a variance for single structure on the site in the functional division of two cottages. Uh, I, I think that's somewhat true. I think we would entertain that. Again, all of us only speak as one person. You need so many hands to be raised, and any single issue could tr trick somebody from not raising. But I think overall that's a reasonable statement. I think it's fair. Anybody disagree with that? No. And uh, you, sir? That's okay. Okay. Next one is um, the current application bef uh, before the board for variance of size and front setbacks and building coverage would reduce the degree of nonconformity with regard to every nonconforming condition uh, con uh, currently existing on the site. And uh, and so I you had some comments on that, Mr. Uh, and I thought that what they had done is true. They did their best to minimize the nonconformity, so that my comment agreed with that statement. Okay. Mine was a little different. I okay. felt that um, technically it met the, I guess technically it met the, the triggers, but those triggers, in my opinion, and based on previous history and based on my understanding, are not reasons. They have nothing to do with the four criteria. Correct. Correct. So they but don't meet the four. They, are they pulled back the front statistics. setback. They pulled in the side setbacks. They but they the, made it better. They made the condition better, which we like to have happen. But it doesn't trigger, it doesn't answer any of the four criteria. Correct. It, it adds to the weight of the decision. Correct. And I'll give it that credit. Yep. Are you okay with that? Yes. I w the board can adopt what they want. I, would, I wouldn't go so far as to say it has nothing to do with the criteria because I think it does play into the, the yeah. existing character and stuff, but I agree that it does not answer your question. Correct. It is a not factor that helps on the yes. existing character question. I agree. Uh, the United States Supreme Court has held that the board continues to make demands of an applicant for, uh, for additional concessions in order to approve an application. At some point, the board's demands violate the application's rights under the takings clause. Well, I, I read the takings clause. I was going to be me and ask you to read that in, because I don't think that comes even close to where we're at. Uh, I would hope you'd agree with that in this case, because we haven't made any demands of the applicant. They've only been here twice. Well, my, my point, Mr. Chair, is that the, the words continues to make demands. I think we made a request. Which we didn't get which, which you could call a demand, and at, in my opinion, never got met in the September meeting and still hasn't gotten met based on the design we see today. And we didn't add anything. It wasn't as if we were pounding on. It, 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 this, when I read the takings clause, 
and I read the case that's referenced. Um, mostly that's about eminent domain, number one, which obviously this is not, at least the case uh, regarding, uh, well, no, the, the, uh, the case on... Uh, it says Coons versus, versus St. Uh, John's River. And, and most of that was regarding the taking school, was regarding eminent domain. Um, and to be candid with you, I think they had a pretty good argument. Um, but I don't think that's relevant to this case for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, and I guess that still hasn't been decided, at least at last I could find. And I couldn't find it. I heard it was still under third review. So I guess if it's gotten all the way to the Supreme Court, we're probably doing pretty good at our level. Um, so what I hear from this eminent domain argument, and even if it's not eminent domain, is we have not come back with multiple changes. We've been consistent. and there have been two separate chairs on the board at these meetings being consistent and trying to say, look, here we want this to work. The easy answer for this board, day one, and I've been advised numerous times that I'm guilty of this, is allowing a applicant to come back a second time. And it puts the town at risk. It's not the first time I've heard it. And I prefer, and this board has seemed to back that position, that if we can work with a reasonable, a reasonable applicant, we will work with a reasonable applicant. But as you know, all bets are off when we get legal involved. So we have to change the way we look at things. That doesn't mean we're not going to care anymore or any less. It means we have to make sure that the, the, the reality is we have to follow, the, in my opinion, as a chairman, my job is to protect the town and do the right thing by the rules to the T. So when I read this ordinance, when I read this rule, and I, I see that it's being used as an argument for the reason why we should make a decision different than we may or may not make, um, continues to make demands, it's just straight on untrue. We've repeated the demand, if you want to call it a demand. I don't even think it's a demand. Um, we have done it to two different people, and I think if the applicant was lied to, that's a totally different conversation. Uh, and it ultimately falls on the ignorance of the law is not our problem. Um, certainly intelligent people, um, they, I understand emotion, I, I live it, so I get it. But the facts are that they were smart enough to hire an attorney. Um, there's, the, the fact that they bought a property without checking the basic guidelines for talking to the town saying, you know, do I need to go to the board to get this approved? They would have been told, yeah, you do. Um, so I don't think there's been repeatable demands. It doesn't, even, it doesn't meet the takings clause. Uh, and I, I get the Kuntz argument, but they basically took away the rights of Kuntz, in my opinion, when I read that. Uh, we're saying, no, we want to work with you. We have no desire to take 14 acres of your property and leave you with one. We don't have any desire to have you build multiple co uh, uh, culverts uh, on top of everything else. We're saying <clears throat> you need to be consistent with the four criteria. And so I'll leave it at that. Does anybody want to add anything to that statement? I agree with that. Would you care to, to rebut that? Or? Okay. Anything you'd like to add to that one? Maybe? That one. Okay. Yeah, the okay. Uh, the property, is, so so that's just real important to me because I, I, I think that, that I just, I can't, I get it, I, there's no, there was no intent or action that this board did that, other than to say we want to stay small. Um, the demands, may, I'll say, I'm sorry, uh, consistent with the neighborhood, the property is located in our four zone, we agree. Number one, uh, Mr. Chair, may I make a statement? Yes. I believe that items one through seven on pages two and three of this letter, the statistics that are shown in here with statistical dimensions on the drawing from the drawings are accurate. Except number two, um, any thoughts on number two regarding the point? I just said the statistical. Okay. Anybody so I think the numbers that you see are correct off the drawing. Anybody have any concerns with that? No. And, uh, Callan, any concerns on that? No, I tried to make them as accurate as I could. Yeah. You did good. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I, I would only raise the question. I'm not 100% sure that the lot coverage is 
they're calling pervious surface is exactly right. Um, some of the driveways have grown in. They're grassy. They're not gravel anymore. But I think at this point it's a, it's a minor point. I think I'd, it's more important to get to the criteria and okay. not, not worry about a few square feet. Of okay. Next page. Um, uh, um, I think at first I thought, uh, to be candid, that you couldn't do an accessory unit in, with the overlay. I've been, I, my understanding is that is inaccurate and I will default to that. Uh, so I don't think anybody's arguing that point. Is that no, fair? I think we no. conceded that. So I think we conceded that. That's yeah. fine. So that's okay. In fact, Mike Morris. Okay. Uh, minimum distance between the principal residence and, the, and on the same lot, height equivalent of taller building, uh, eight. Anybody have any problems with that? No, I just, is uh, the last statement saying the existence of the two principal structures on this grandfather non-conforming lot is completely eliminated? Okay. And as can see from above, I'll tie this in, the Dayton's request for variance of only the front and side setbacks and building coverage. The other space and bulk requirements are either met or they are dimensional requirements of the lot. They remain grandfathered because the Dayton's are not changing the lot lines. Uh, the, the, the lot lines aren't being changed, obviously, because it's a lot. Correct. So that's uh, so I don't know if that's a mistaken. No, no, that's ex exactly what I was saying. Is I listed all the space and bulk requirement. The lot is still non-conforming as to the lot size. Okay. But none of those change, so we're not You're asking for variance. Gotcha. You, Mr. Chairman, you actually are also seeking a variance on the height of the building because the existing buildings are non-conforming. You're you're replacing them with a non-conforming building height that's height. higher. So you're actually asking for a variance on height as well. Absolutely. Okay. So, and I, I guess I, w I would disagree on that, and I think that would be an important thing to sort out. That analysis would be if we were here before the board for what we're allowed to do um, non under the non-conforming uses as of right, and we're saying, you know, under under non-conforming uses, what you can do as of right, you can't go up too high without kicking you over into variance land. Once you're in variance land, th there's no such thing as a height variance if you're below 35 feet. Well, well and let me challenge you there. Okay. Uh, once you're in variance lands, all bets are off. Well, but I guess what I'm saying is essentially to the extent you were thinking about it as we want a height variance, we would be analyzing this under what can we do non-conforming as of right, and we might be in the miscellaneous appeal land for does keeping the same footprint and going up a little higher than the height requirement in those provisions, none of which we've cited, does that require a variance on the height? But right now we're in the R4 zone and we're allowed as of right 30 feet, so there is no height variance. But, but because, uh, it's non -conforming, it, because it's non-conforming, because it's non-conforming, that doesn't hold. So the challenge we've got is, and, and we've got plenty of, of cases that we've done this way, where we have said this is the limit you can go to on, on, on height. And if they wanted to come before us as a, uh, a, a uh, uh, miscellaneous appeal, I'm not sure it fits uh, because of the those, those shoreland. I, I'll, I'll leave it as, let's say we can. That's their option, but that's not what they've done. So they haven't come as a miscellaneous right. appeal. If they wanted to come back as a miscellaneous appeal for height, They've got all the right in the world to do that, but that's not the point here. They came as a variance, which includes the height in that case. So, and here's where I would disagree. In order for it to include the height, you need to be able to point to a provision in the ordinance that tells you what the height limit is and then what we're varying it from. So, for instance, if you were pointing to something that said the height limit here is 15 feet and you want 30 feet, we're asking for a 15-foot variance. Instead, the only height limit that's applicable is there's a 30-foot allowed there's 35 feet allowed as of right, but if you go 35 feet, then your required setbacks increase so that we would be asking for a bigger setback variance. Not but if one foot off. If you got one foot of that property that's outside of the pocket and you want to go up and you're in a shoreland zone, you're at a variance. It, you're, I, dis, I disagree. Respectfully, I disagree that we're, um, I we'd be required for a height it's, variance. It's too freaking late. I can't even sort through this stuff. Right. I'm, I'm Let's just have it as a point of contention and move along and see if we can get through it. 
good. Okay. I, yeah, I, I won't be here much longer. I, okay. I, I, I've got to be up at 5, five o'clock. All right, so what's that lead us with? Uh, We're down into the land in question. Okay, so the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. You want to read in? I'm fine letting it stand as written. If you feel like you need to respond to certain things, I mean, technically it's, it's consistent that we re we have the applicant read in, so I think we need to read in its consistency. Okay. Um, okay. We don't have to you don't have to read the whole thing. Respond to the questions. Respond to the criteria. It okay. goes into the record. We have the written document, but you do need a response. Okay. It doesn't have to be written as That's as fine. as stated. You can you know you can summarize and move forward. That's fine by me. Okay. So to summarize is all the things that I've said previously. I think that the fact that there are two existing single family dwellings means that the way you're analyzing reasonable rate of return um, should be taking into account those two dwellings and what's reasonable for the living area, et cetera, of a, of a house, um, of two houses essentially. And as I've said, I think 1,400 um, square feet of living area on a footprint that shrinks the existing nonconformity in every way um, uh, meets this reasonable return requirement. Um, and so I'll incorporate both what I've written and everything I've said previously. So why don't we start right down at your end and uh, we'll go with... Uh, one of the statements here said the board just previously suggested that rather than allow the two dwelling units to be sold separately, the board would prefer. And I don't think that we actually ever made that statement. I think we had talked about um, that we didn't believe they had the right to split and that it looked like the most viable option would be to combine those two units into one. So if I could short circuit this, I'll yeah. say, I, th I feel like we're saying the same thing that we said right. before, and right. I'm willing to stipulate that anywhere where I've characterized it will default to okay. the, what you guys have already expressed in terms of how you would characterize okay. it. Okay. Anything else on that? that on number one, for, for uh, I'm sorry, for Mr. Lazell. Uh, sorry, I'm looking, I'm reading down in the bottom, my bad. One of the statements said, without combining the two dwellings into a single structure, no amount of renovation to the existing non-conforming structure can accommodate their uh, their need to care for the dwelling. No, that wasn't it. Sorry. No, I take that back. Sorry. Uh, great. The current conf configuration of the lot with separate structures for each dwelling greatly reduces the ability to accommodate their daughter and prevents them from realizing a reasonable return on this lot. I disagreed with that. Ms. Steven? I also agree with Ms. Loisel comments regarding the preventing them from realizing a reasonable return on this law. Star? I don't believe that reasonable return means building anything that you want to build. I think that a reasonable return can easily easily be had by building a, a structure, uh, maybe not a structure that will house 50 people, but that will house a number of people in a certain way. It may not be the right lot for this, this particular person because of their personal needs. That doesn't mean the property won't give a reasonable return. I agree with Mrs. Stock. I, I, I agree with that statement. Uh, my point uh, on my findings of fact regarding this is that these two buildings could be raised and built the exact same way, and in fact, you'd have a reasonable return. So even if this building is just done and replaced, there's a reasonable return. The fact that it's sold shows there's a reasonable return. The fact that um, it's used and rented year, uh, year in and year out shows there's a reasonable return. So to me, there's absolutely a reasonable return on this property. Um, moreover, I just tied to the uh, the current configuration of the lot separate structures for each dwelling is greatly reduces the ability to come into lot. I don't disagree with any of the issues regarding how it affects the family's life. I don't. But that is not what their criteria states. It is, does the land in question yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted? And as of last summer, they were renting this property. 
that makes it a reasonable return. So those are my findings of fact, conclusion of law on that one. Number two. <coughs> um, that the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Mr. Uh, Boisel. Uh, my first comment, or my biggest comment, was around exceptionally difficult. Three sentences in. Even one single family dwelling would be ex would be exceptionally difficult to construct within the narrow and exceptionally difficult to me. I, I would just need definition of that and I don't think we necessarily need it uh, because I think in general we're okay on this question. But just that wording I struggled with. So, If you think it meets the criteria, whatever words you would yeah, prefer um, to have are fine. Leave it the way it is. Good. I concur. I think the, yes, I concur. Stark, I, I'm okay with that one. Certainly a, a narrow lot, as we discussed. I, I think that the, you know, the, a narrow lot, but I mean, if, yeah, I agree. I agree. So the need of variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions of the neighborhood for me. Um, yeah, two, two pieces of building on one lot that's small. I don't have a huge problem with that. I think from a practical point of view, the line there, it says even one single building would be di di exceptionally difficult. I would argue, under normal circumstances, if this was a single-story house, you could then revisit A, because that would open that opportunity up to debate that conversation about moving them. But that does not negate A. It's, it, it would be an option. So bottom line is I, I'm, I'm okay with two. Three, that the granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. So can uh, I on this one just speak and say that sure. will anything, like the first paragraph, um, isn't relevant anymore. Any to the extent there was any confusion um, and any reference to whether or not the future code applies or not, I think that issue is all settled. Thank um, you. And so I think we only want to address whether the existing proposal meets this criteria. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, the statement that says the proposed house fits in well with similar houses in the immediate vicinity is more in keeping with the essential character of the locality. I think the data that was given today made for a better argument as opposed to what we have seen in the past. Again, the, the physical scale of this building, to me, does not fit in the character because of the upstream home, and sorry, I don't, I don't know what the number is, is it 20? thank you, 21, is so close to the property line that the scale of this building will directly affect how it feels, and I think that's going to affect the character. So it's really around the scale and the proximity of that home that is upstream, I'm calling upstream, that makes a big difference. So the design as I see it, I don't believe fits in the character of the neighborhood. And just to be clear, when you yeah. say scale, are you saying height? I'm saying both height and width of the building. It's not the windows or the uh, decor in which the, it's designed around. It's the physical scale of the width and the height and the in the close... It, the, mass. the mass. The mass, thank you. Uh, um, okay, but uh, and just building. to clarify yep. whether or not it's the distance from the lot line that gives you trouble or not. Uh, it's, it's, it, it is a combination of the distance from this building to the lot line and the lot line to the existing building on the next property. Okay. That those two distances added up and then the height of the building and the width of the new building make it seem to me that it's not in character. It will feel like a very big building just because of the close proximity of the upstream home. Thank you for being so clear. You're welcome. My comments regarding the uh, character of the neighborhood with this um, with this proposed building also mimics, again, uh, Mr. Loisel's, especially in regard to previous comments that have already been made this evening about, again, the mass and scale that uh, potentially dwarfs the adjacent buildings. Well, re regarding the, the essential character, I, I, again, 
Okay. This board isn't saying no. We don't. We wouldn't. We wouldn't try to help you along and, and go along with with some changes to the property and even go with a larger structure than than is currently there. But again, that same scale. Uh, it, it, it's not like Mr. Loisel said. It's the combination of the length, the width, and the height. Now you bring any one of those to a different level, and it changes out all that. So it, it's just just too massive for that area. I'm in agreement that if it wasn't for the proximity of the neighbors, if it was Mr. Coyne's property up on the beginning of Ocean, I, I think it, I think it, I'd pass that. I just think. Cramming that into that lot seems out of character to me. Uh, as far as the granting of the grants will uh, not alter the central character of the locality, uh, I think that the area, if you stood in the middle of the road and you looked around, in my opinion, and again, this is all subjective because that's what character is about, um, is that what's there now is the character. Replacing that doesn't offend me. Replacing it with something that may or may not be in other <coughs> parts of Higgins Beach does, in my opinion, violate that character standard. That doesn't mean that they don't, there aren't other properties at Higgins Beach that fit the character for that locality in Higgins Beach. Mm -hmm. But in the specific locality we're talking, from a 360-degree Google map, when I look at that, I go, that is outside of the scope of that um, locality, and I do believe that Higgins Beach is a bunch of separate little locations. It's not one entity, and that's how I define that. Um, I did try to look up the interview, and I couldn't find it uh, from state ordinance. So um, the only other comment I have on that is that I do believe there is a reasonable standard that could get us to that character, that, that that nothing is not viable either. I think that there is something. This is just not it. Um, and I, so I guess I'd stop on that. Um, four. There's a, little, a bunch of stuff in here. Um, space and bulk. Uh, there is a comments, couple of comments in here about the board has no authority to look at the length, width, height of the building and conclude that it is too big. The board must instead look at whether the building is set uh, that close to the lot line and with as much building area coverage alters the essential character of the locality. And clearly, it does not. That's a that's a that's the opinion. I respect that opinion, um, but in my opinion, it uh, the board when you're looking at if this property were just coming in looking for height, because it's an issue of land zone, it'd be back, but is it either as a miscellaneous appeal or, as, or a variance appeal or any other appeal that it fits, we'd be having a conversation about height. Um, and we've done it time and time again. So I would say that's important to recognize in there, and I think this history of that established it. But uh, we did, I do agree with the fact that uh, we're not comparing it fronts to other properties up and down the street. We're not doing that. We don't have a problem with that. I mean, if it came close to the street, it wouldn't offend me. Um, that's not the issue. It's how does it feel? How does the character feel? And that is, an, um, that is a subject. It's like art. And that's why there are so many engineers out there that come up with different designs and so many architects that come up with different designs. It is not something that is a finite. There's no finite answer to that question. And ultimately, the finite answer is how people vote. Um, and again, I, I fall back to Higgins Beach's multiple personalities, as in the last case, even though it was in Higgins Beach, it's a totally different locality. And we wouldn't have based that standard on that, this location. Uh, the next one, the hardship is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Uh, I do want to go on record in saying that if the Daytons were taken advantage of, I hope that that did not occur and that you were given the right information um, around the uh, January meeting that we had and what we had told the previous owners. Um, but I think this it was not a 
I'm going to agree with this statement that it was not a hardship created by the applicant or a previous owner, but I I'm also want to go on record that I hope that that didn't happen. So I'm going to say okay to this one. I agree. Uh, the hardship is not the result of an action taken by the applicant. Okay. Yeah, I would have to agree. Uh, the, the board did make comments that, that we would uh, uh, entertain combining the two, but certainly not to an unlimited size. I'd like to throw a curve before you answer, if you don't mind. Just because I want to be difficult. There may be an advantage for the board, and I'll ask their attorney for this. There may be an advantage for us to say that there was a hardship created by the previous owner. Well, I guess what I would like, if you if you want to separate it out, you could say that the you could go on record and find facts as to what happened. The, for the hardship criteria, I think we would like you to find that the existing two lots was an issue that creates a hardship that wasn't caused by the applicant. To the extent that there are additional hardships uh, needs of this family um, that were um, and that were here because of misrepresentations. I think that it is, it would be helpful to kind of make those findings separate, if that makes sense. My translation, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I don't think that we have enough evidence to, to actually say that there was anything done by a prior owner. I don't think that, that there's enough. enough of a body of evidence here to, to say that. I think what it really gets to is did somebody split the lot and reduce the lot size at some point, you know, to make this a hardship. So I, I, I don't think I'll there's enough. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you, I think that this one's that. fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, I agree. Okay. I, don't, I don't believe there's a hardship for the owner or the previous owner. I'm good as it stands, sir. Okay. Um, so let's come back to the board on uh, the first criteria. Uh, with your conclusions based on the conversation, land cannot re yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. My conclusions are around reasonable return is that uh, the expectations were that uh, when we had discussed this in January, um, we went over a certain size that's been put on record. Uh, the information that was presented on the drawings um, was a building uh, larger in mass than uh, I had expected. And uh, based on the multiple revisions that were brought forth to the board, I didn't see enough change uh, to justify that I feel that the appellant is asking for a reasonable return. I think that um, with, I, I, I got to get the square footage right, 34, 100 square feet, is that correct, total? Livable space, is that what you're saying? Livable space, both floors? I don't know. It was about 2,200 um, plus the 720, so about... 29. Okay, so approximately 3,000 square feet, um, I, I think is, it may need to meet the family's needs, but it doesn't pass the straight face test for me for a reasonable return in this particular um, application. I agree in that uh, the, the revisions that were made to sort of decrease um, decrease the size of the structure to bring it more in line with what the expectations of the board were were not met. Um, there is a reasonable return that can be yielded from this property. It just uh, has to be done a different way. I believe that there are multiple options for a, for a reasonable return, um, including leaving the two structures there and continuing to rent them, rebuilding those just as they as they stand at the same size, and many many others. Just this this one particular option is just not the right one. I agree with Mr. Stack, but I also agree that there is a way that the the Daytons can get what they want and. And everybody, you know, can satisfy everybody. So I, I believe there is a way that we can get there. Based on just the raw statement, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the grant is granted. I stand by the fact that this property already has a reasonable return. Um, the, there is multiple proof. The 
the comments from the buyers, sellers on record when they discussed how great the property was, how they had people that would buy it and relatives that would buy it if they could afford it, which is on record. With that uh, speaks pretty loudly to me. The fact that this has been rented for multiple years, the fact that uh, it is, hasn't been condemned, uh, the fact that there was a buyer that was willing to pay for it at full price. Um, and I, so I, I fall back on the hard position uh, that from a from strictly from a, a a law point of view, this cannot be met. Doesn't meet it. This land does does yield a reasonable return. They've owned it from day one. They bought it. They've never sold it. It's never been sold. They've certainly got a reasonable return out of these years, and it's certainly got usable life left. And that that negates any question regarding whether or not there's a reasonable return. Next one is uh, um, take a vote. Okay, all, all uh, in favor of number one, of number one uh, A that it meets the standard of reasonable return. All opposed. Unanimous opposed. Next one. That the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. I think we need to bludgeon it. No, I think uh, they have shown the burden of proof that it meets the test for number two. I agree, just based on the existing conditions of the property. I, I totally agree with this one. I, I have no problems with it at all. Echo that. I have no problems with two. I'm fine with uh, two. I'll be at the need for the variances due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. This is a unique property. I have no problem with that because of the two units. And I think that's fine. So all in favor of B. That's unanimous. Thank you. C. The granting of the variance will not result. Uh, I'm sorry. The granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. We'll just keep on going down okay. with you. Again, I've been on record in talking about the close proximity of um, the structure and the mass of the structure as compared to uh, the location of the closest home. And I believe, based on that, due to the mass of the structure and the dimensional. Uh, data that was given that it does not meet the criteria for essential character. It changes the essential character of the neighborhood, and uh, in order for it to meet the essential character of the neighborhood, then it would need to be modified in design. The church, the structure as it currently stands, would alter the essential character of the neighborhood based on comments made by the board earlier this evening and comments made by the public. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. The uh, the, the whole scope of the project is just not does not fit with the character of the neighborhood. Um, I don't believe we had a single neighbor that was in favor of this project. Uh, the way that it stands, it just, just doesn't mean it for me. I would agree. It's obvious I would agree with that. So that uh, the, the granting of the variance uh, will not alter the essential character of the locality. Uh, I want to separate this from A, so this is standalone for me. So A stands as I stated. C stands slightly different. I do believe it doesn't meet as proposed, but it could meet the standard. And if it met the standard, I would reevaluate this application from start to finish with a fresh eye. Can I agree with that statement as well? Too. Yes, I, I would agree with that. Yes. So standalone C, standalone A. I just want that clarified because I think A is standalone, but C again. D. The hardship is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. I agree. Uh, it was not the applicant or the prior owner that caused this. I agree. I agree. I think there were some misunderstandings um, uh, along the way uh, that may have may have contributed to this, but. Just the prior owner or the or the applicant? No. I agree. Uh, the ad the hardship is not a result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Uh, I will say that 
I agree it was certainly not the applicant, uh, but if in fact the applicant were misled, which we don't know, it may have altered this, the results of this board. We don't know, and that's not the case. We don't know, but if they were misled, and that's up to the other people than us, I would say that may have had an effect on the final decision. Agreed. Um, I'd like to move uh, at this point that uh, we have to vote on. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. We didn't vote on C and we, we didn't vote on D. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of C? All opposed of C. It's unanimous. All in favor of D? That's unanimous. And we'll come for a final motion. And I'd like to propose, if you don't mind, I'd like to propose, propose that we decline this request without prejudice, so that. Um, in the event there's an alternative that we have not put a limit on, we've not put the one-year restriction on them. I, I would like to add that that would be request number 2555. So request number 2555. So my motion is that we decline this uh, 2555 uh, as presented without prejudice. That makes sense to everybody. Everybody understand what I mean by that? I second that. Yes, I. Okay, and you're comfortable with that statement? Yes, thank you. Okay, all in favor? That's unanimous opposed. It's none. That includes it. I'm sorry, it didn't go the way you wanted. So I'm, I just want to say thank you for a Herculean effort. Um, a very professionally run board, and I am astounded that you are here till 1 in the morning. <laughs> but thank you for being so thorough. And and Mr. Callan, you're an impressive attorney. I appreciate it. Uh, Mrs. Dayton, good luck. And if there's anything we can do, please. All right. Um, any comments from the board? I don't get ask you. Good night. Mm -hmm. I have a motion to adjourn. I'll vote to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. <laughs> Unanimous, we are adjourned. Thank you very much for anybody who remained. Yeah,